All right, so our last topic, our final one today. We'll see how short we can make this one because it's, it's a pretty long podcast, I think, today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're oh, almost yeah. right at the oh. cutoff point. So, yeah. so we're just gonna we're, we're gonna just talk probably about ten minutes about this, uh, mostly because I think I'm gonna do a lot of the talking, which is I guess pretty typical. But right. <laughs> um, well. So Breath of the Wild. I'm gonna let you know right now we're talking spoilers. So if you do not want to know anything about Breath of the Wild, um, in terms of uh, <laughs> characters and backstories and yada yada yada. Um, some of this is going to delve into speculation, which is what you're seeing in the title of this. But uh, speculation isn't what I'm worried about. If you don't like spoilers, just tune it out. Tune right. out. Don't even watch Bye. this episode. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> All right. So, Femitsu Magazine, uh, it comes out every week. They released uh, a big feature on Nintendo Switch and focused a lot on ARMS and specifically Breath of the Wild. We don't really learn anything new from ARMS. It's kind of just a repeat of information we know with the same images and screenshots. Uh, the same images and screenshots for Breath of the Wild, but we actually learn new information about some of the characters. Um, so uh, there are spoilers ahead, blah, blah, blah. So he- here's the deal. So the Zora girl we see in, in the trailer, mm-hmm. her name is Mifa. And Mifa is a Zora girl who lives in Hyrule. She has a special power that no other Zoras have. Uh, but perhaps due to that, she's somewhat introverted and doesn't talk much. And Femitsu wonders how she will use the spear that she's wielding. That's her weapon. Uh, Darkel, or literally uh, Darukara. you got to remember that these might not be the final names in English. This yeah. is Japanese. Right. So, like, there's all oftentimes translation differences. So, Mifa and Darkel or Darukuru might not actually be the name of these characters in English. Um, but he is a Goron warrior who lives in the mountain, mountains of Hyrule. No surprise where Gorons live. Um, he's normally calm, but when entering battles, he changes into a very brave warrior that screams loudly while sweeping away enemies. Um, and then finally, you have Rebo, who is a member, and this is the key part, of the bird-like Rito tribe, mm-hmm. which lives in the skies of Hyrule. He is spotted wearing the same blue scarf as Darko and Mifa, and each of them also wield different weapons. We also learned uh, in a different thing from Enuma that the guys wearing the blue scarves are like your companions. Okay. That's what I was actually just wondering. Um, we don't know what that means because traditionally Zelda companions mean people who are travel with you and basically give you hints the whole time. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that's what these characters are going to do because he also says that they're companions but in a very mysterious way, which tells me okay, so they're not traditional. And they just with you randomly all the time. show up. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We have no idea what that means. Right. Um, but the point I want to highlight is the fact that they say Mifa is a Zora girl, yeah. and Rebel is a bird like Rito. You didn't know this probably until I told you today. Right. But in Hyrule Historia, it's been theorized for a while, but Hyrule Historia confirmed it 100% that Rito evolved from Zora. Mm -hmm. Now, we know everyone out there that knows this knows that this is crazy stupid that it even happened. Zora are people that are like fish people that live in water. world gets flooded, figured they'd be in heaven. Instead, they become birds. Yeah. So Um, it would make more sense if it was in reverse order. And the thing is, is the Rito... (laughs) In this game, look even more like birds than the ones from The Wind Waker. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the ones from The Wind Waker? I think, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they had like, it looked like they were like literally had a, a normal nose with a beak on top. It was really weird. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. had to earn, yeah, they yeah. Had to earn their right. feathers to fly. Right. Yeah. Um, anyway, so like, it didn't it didn't feel like they were, This feels like a fully evolved form of Rito. So this is more down the line of evolution, I think. Um, which means you can already say, oh, this happens way after Wind Waker. However, Zora and Rito are in the same game. That's not how evolution works. Why do why do things evolve? Because something happens that forces them to some situation comes up that forces them to change. To adapt it's usually to something that happens yeah. to the environment they live in. Yeah. Why does the cold keep changing? Because we keep releasing different medications. Yeah. So it evolves and yeah. evolves and evolves and evolves. And granted, yes. we've been lucky so far that it just evolves into something that's the same thing. Just just roughly. Does, yeah, yeah. Rough, that doesn't. Yeah. You know, thankfully, it's you know they keep saying how we're going to create super viruses, but so far the things that are evolving aren't actually making us worse than what the original did. Mm-hmm. It's just making it harder to treat, yeah. um, which is what it is. That's why the common cold will probably never have a cure. Um, but that's why I, I kind of like cold medicine. It doesn't treat the thing; it just treats the symptoms. Yeah. yeah. So just a personal take with me and medicine. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather just treat the symptoms than worry about. 
telling my body how to fix something. Uh, but doesn't mean. I, by the way, it doesn't mean I don't support vaccines. You absolutely shouldn't even, like vaccinate your kids, man. Don't yeah, be stupid. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a reason that there's certain things that have been practically eliminated. Right. Because of vaccines. Right. Uh, so Breath of the Wild timeline placement is is kind of what I want to talk about because generally when evolution occurs. You don't have this highly informed involved with the Rito, and then the Zoras are just still around, just right. chilling. Yeah. Um, and I've heard explanations that, like, oh, you know, maybe you travel back in time, and that's where the yeah. Zoras are. Um, 100 years ago, the Zoras were around, or 100 yeah. years later, now it's the Rito, and they're not actually together. But they all wear blue scarves, which tells me they're all involved in the gameplay. So far, we don't know that you can play in the past, but we know you can play in the present. Yes. So I'm assuming that it's not that complicated, that they are all in the same world. Um, that confuses me the only way i could think it would work is if like there was some part of hyrule that got isolated isolated and kept the same stipulations that the zora have to live so i'm gonna throw this out here this is something that isn't too uncommon of a theory but as soon as i saw this it felt like this just confirmed in my mind and i could still be taken back the game could end up telling me something totally different but this is what i feel right now right now the Zelda timeline is one of the weirdest time, not not the weirdest in gaming. I think Kingdom Hearts kind of takes that cake because <laughs> the story is so convoluted. Well, yeah, but uh, Zelda is really weird in that it goes on a straight path, goes on a straight path, hits Ocarina of Time, splits off into three different timelines. Right, and one of the timelines seems like they pulled out of their ass because it's a timeline that can exist in any Zelda game. Link dies. Here's a new timeline. Link can die in any game. Yeah. So that's a yeah. crappy explanation to me because that means there's already infinite timelines then. Yeah. 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 So whatever. whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. They they wanted a way to explain away the old games because they didn't fit in with the new games. Um, <laughs> that's basically what they I, mean, I say old games, A Link Between Worlds and Twilight Force Heroes also falls in the downfall timeline, but they're also games that don't necessarily uh, impact anything that happened in A Link to the Past or The Legend of Zelda, etc. Um, yeah. Anyway, so basically it was... Here's Miyamoto's Arrow games. Here's Ijinomo, and Ijinomo's games do not play nice with those games. So yeah. we're just going to shove them off to the side. Right. Link right. died, and that's yeah. when everything happened because right. he died. Yeah, the end. Um, <laughs> so you have that. Then you have the other time that always made sense, and and this is because Ocarina of Time deals with time. In right. fact, it actually deals with a paradox in there, the Song of Storms paradox, where uh, Link learns the Song of Time uh, as an adult from the windmill music guy inside the windmill in Kakariko Village. But Link also, after he learns it, goes back as a child and he ends up being the one who teaches it to him. Yeah. So it's a paradox because... Right. Yeah. How does he know it as a kid to teach to the guy? Well, he knows it as a kid because he travels back, but how... He didn't... Link didn't know the song until he was an adult. Right. But he traveled back in time and as a child, after he learned it as an adult, taught it to him. So, how did the guy know it to teach it to him as an adult? Yeah. If like like, yeah. the, and this is the weird thing that happens when you travel in time. Like, oh, right. these yeah. paradoxes can exist, oh, and right. like, the person who's traveling has all his memories, but you know, it, it's yeah. weird. Like, did I already travel back in time and didn't know it? And all, yeah. like, it's yeah. anyway, it's crazy. It's right, crazy. Right, right. And, so, like, when you're dealing with time, you know, there's a lot of theories out there about how it works, but it it can get really convoluted. And what they did. Uh, here that made sense for splitting the timeline is that when you get to the end of Ocarina of Time, you defeat Ganon, Hyrule is saved, yay, praise, yay. praise, praise Hylia, praise the gods. Um, Zog was like, I'm so sorry uh, that you lost your childhood because in this game you travel seven years in the future. So yeah. basically you lose your entire like age 10 through 17 age, yeah. which okay. that might not be a bad age to skip. Yeah, right. but yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, Link gets no say in this. And she just cries and says, I'm going to send you back to when you were a kid so you can live your childhood out. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, if she right. sends him back in time when he's a kid, that means none of the events have been stopped yet. So in order for him to stop those events, he's got to go to – He they show him in, in like, the post-game going to Zelda and basically telling her what, what's going to happen. Yeah. So it prevents yeah. everything from happening in right. the first place. And then there's your paradox because you have – where well, not your paradox. There's your, there's your split because you have yeah. – he defeated everything, so that's yeah. still like when Zelda sent him back. It's not like the Zelda sent him back was no longer there. So that that time is still going on when Link is no longer part of the equation. Yep, and that's what leads to the Wind Waker, where uh, Ganon came and there wasn't a Link around to stop him, and so the gods flooded everything. Yeah, to make him stop because yeah. there's nothing to conquer anymore. Yeah, right. What are you right. gonna? Yeah, 
create mass murder to, to stop yes. a mass murderer. It made some total sense to me. Yeah, right. Um, anyways, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just yeah, don't get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So you do all that, uh, and then Link in The Wind Waker isn't, uh, like, a blood... He, he wasn't born as a hero. He had to earn the right to be the hero. Mm-hmm. Um, which made sense because the hero bloodline had, was gone. It yeah. got sent back and it's, it's not there anymore. Yeah. Uh, so, and then there's the Link was sent back as a kid and then he stops everything from happening and then he gets to go on his, in his merry way and have a happy-go-lucky life, which he doesn't because Majora's Mask happens. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. That made sense. That's why the, the split timeline thing started. So, now we have these three timelines. Because yep. now there's one where he just dies entirely. Yep. Um, I know people say, oh, we don't know if he dies. He dies. He dies. Because you honestly think Link with the Travels of Courage is going to stop unless he dies. He gone. Um, and that's one thing that, that people theorize about the Bible. Yeah, well, he obviously didn't die 100 years ago when he was when he was battling. I'm like, how do you know that? Yeah, right. Yeah. Or maybe him being preserved wasn't his choice because yeah. he was going to die yeah. and Zelda put him in that chamber. Right. So, like, you don't know that. Right. Yeah. You don't know that Link didn't stand up there until he couldn't breathe anymore yeah. and then, you know, he didn't have a choice when Zelda saved him. It's like, we don't know how that plays out yet. I hope... Uh, it's crazy, but I just think Link with the Traffic of the Courage there's no way that he's standing down as long as he can breathe. Right. Um, that's just the way... That's what the Traffic of the Courage does. You're not afraid. You just keep going at it even if you're losing. Uh, so... In these three timelines, a whole bunch of stuff happens. On the adult timeline, which is when Link gets sent back, so that's when the Wind Waker happens, that's when the Kokiri become the Koroks. The Koroks are in this game uh, in Breath of the Wild. Those are those little little guys with the flying around. Yep. Yep. Um, look like little tree stubs. Yeah. And then there is the Rito, which, again, evolved because of yep. the flood of Hyrule. <laughs> Weird. Yep. yep. Okay. The Zora die out so the zora are no longer in zelda games after the after actually not even in the wind waker so it, they die out sometime in the events before the wind waker and on that timeline so zoras no longer exist zoras continue to exist on the child timeline because the flooding of hyrule never happens they obviously also continue to exist on the adult timeline or on the i'm sorry on the death timeline whatever it is the uh I already forget what yeah. it's officially called. Anyways, the timeline where, where he dies. They continue to live there because the world was never flooded. Um, which is really fall? weird. It's really weird because... I, this is why I always thought it was... The, using the excuse of him dying is a bad excuse. Because isn't it the same thing? Like, if he... If he's not there to stop Ganon and they flood yep. the world. Yep. And he dies. So Ganon's never stopped. Wouldn't they flood the world anyways? That's yeah, what... They, yeah, again, it's yeah. another thing like... Yeah. You're, you're just throwing yeah. anyway sorry I'm getting too right. deep into the right. intricacies and the yep. plot holes in the yep. timeline yep. Um, so you have all that going on um, so so basically because Rito and Zora are in the same game um, and in addition he's called Calamity Ganon yeah. he, now I remember what that, that, that timeline's called the downfall timeline yes. the one where he dies yes. he, Ganondorf is only called Ganon in the downfall timeline okay he is not. He's called Ganondorf in all other situations okay. in the other timelines. So you have Calamity Ganon. Yep. You have Zoras, which you well even more than Zoras. You also have Wolf Link in there for, with the amiibo, yep. and you also have a ruined Castle Town from Twilight Princess. Um, maybe even the Bridge of Elden. We don't know one hundred percent if that if it is the Bridge of Elden, but it looked like the Bridge of Elden in some early footage. Uh, so we have Twilight Princess references, and then we obviously have clear Wind Waker connections with Koroks and. Uh, Rito now yep. um, and some people argue the art design whatever. the Great Deku Tree was also in The Wind Waker and also in Ocarina of Time um, so and this references back to Ocarina of Time which which means that we know this happened after Ocarina of Time because there's yep. too many references back to Ocarina of Time so to me this is a Dragon Break situation yep. where all three timelines reconverge yep. and Breath of the Wild is the point that it happens at Something happened 100 years ago and made everything come back together. Right. Don't know what that something is. Don't know if the game's ever going to explain it. Yeah. Um, because Nintendo's honestly not that good at storytelling. <laughs> but I think that everything's just going to come crashing together. Yep. And we're going to have this solid timeline moving forward. Yep. Um, and to support this beyond what's happening in the game, per se, that we know about. All the different races, all the different references, all the different landmarks. Besides all that, because that's just, you know, we don't know, you could argue we don't know enough yet, which we don't. There could be different ways they explain all this stuff that ends up keeping it in one of the three timelines. 
It's that E.J. Nomo has come out and said in an interview that how do how do I phrase this? That Breath of the Wild, uh, Miyamoto agreed with him. That Breath of the Wild redefines what Zelda is. Mm. Wasn't it? Wasn't it something along the lines of "This is what they always wanted"? No, me. that was that was that was uh, that this is the essence of Zelda. Oh, okay, okay, this is different than the essence of okay. Zelda. Means like this is what Zelda's always been. Okay. Like this is the core of what. Okay. Like forget all right. the traditions. This is what Zelda is. Okay. Um, they want to redefine what Zelda is. Um, so you have the essence of Zelda, which is this feels distinctly like Zelda, and then you have redefining what that means. Okay. Um, so they kind of work it against each other, but with each other at the same time. Right. It's really weird. Okay. So the last time they really did this was Ocarina of Time. You could argue. I argue it's a link to the past because I think everything that Ocarina of Time does, Link to the past did, it's just in 3D. But whatever, people view, think Ocarina of Time is, is that one. So if whether it's a link to the past or it's Ocarina of Time, reality is they haven't redefined the series in a hell of a long time. Zelda 1 defined the series, and then Zelda 2 threw that all out the window and <laughs> redefined it right away. Um, and then a, a Link to the Past and Ocarina of Time kind of brought it all back together and redefined what it was going to be moving forward. And every game after it has been built off of it. Um, we talked about this last week about, you know, should this be the game that we, future Zelda games are built off of. And I think when they say that this is going to redefine Zelda, that means it is going to be the game that th future games are built off of. And if that's the case, they need to un complicate the way the series works right now right because right now one timeline ends with spirit tracks yep um spirit tracks doesn't even happen in traditional hyrule it's in a new hyrule okay there is ganondorf has been killed there is no more ganondorf okay. the last enemy we defeated was maladus and there's no more maladus so as far as we are aware there is no bad guys left that doesn't mean that there isn't, but as far right. as we are aware as a player, there's nothing left. We have not had a game after Spirit Tracks, and that came out in 2009. Um, in the, let, me, let me bring up the Zelda timeline quick, just to make sure I have the final game in each, in each timeline, right? Uh, Zelda timeline. Uh, in the Child Era, it looks like it ends with uh, Four Swords Adventures. Yeah. Yes, uh, Four Swords and Hyrule Adventures. Uh, so I think those are the two Four No, no, the one Four Swords game happens in Far Cry Time. So uh, Four Swords Adventures uh, happens at the end of... So it's so the Princess one people remember. Four Swords Adventures, I guess, happens after that at some point. Um, which is very interesting since Four Swords and another game related to Four Swords Adventures happens before Ocarina of Time. But right. again, I didn't do the timeline. Uh, and the decline, or the, the heroes defeated... Uh, ends with the adventure of Link. So we're at, we're at this point where you have all these different endings in the series and each ending going distinctly different directions. At the end of this timeline, Zelda's an RPG. Okay. Because yep. the adventure of Link's an RPG. At the end of this time, Zelda's a multiplayer game. Right. Four Swords yep. Adventures. Yep. Yep. Multiplayer yep. game on GameCube. Yep. End of this timeline, all the bad guys are dead and we're not even in Hyrule anymore and Link rides a train. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah! What brings this all together? So you have RPG elements. You have multiplayer aspects. And you have tech. Technology. Yeah. What brings this all together? Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, we don't know how multiplayer aspects yeah. have anything to do with it yet. But, cool. but you know, I, I, it calls back more to Twilight Princess. So they might even be skipping Four Swords references and just calling back to Twilight Princess. But either way, yeah. um, it just feels like this is what's happening. And this is what's going to be moving forward. They're going to uncomplicate all of this. Where one timeline ends as an RPG, one that ends as a multiplayer game, one that ends where all the bad guys are dead. Yeah. They are just going to say, screw that. We're, instead of scrapping the timeline, because if they yeah. scrap the timeline and retcon everything and reboot yeah, the series, uh, no. people are going to get mad. Oh, yeah. So instead, they'd be like, look, we're going to explain this really crappily, but we're converging all three timelines. Yep. And now every game moving forward is built on Breath of the Wild. All the stuff that happened in the past matters in the past. It does not matter from Breath of the Wild forward. Right. Right. Um, that's my theory. It's it, crazy. It, I know some people agree, some people don't. Um, Sounds like it works for me. And you haven't been theorizing about timelines like I have my whole life with Zelda, man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I The third split really upsets me, but I've always wanted the timelines to come back together because I felt the series was getting too bound to the timeline, if that makes yeah. sense. Yep. Um, everything that happened with games had to be explained away in the timeline in some way, and I didn't always like the way it did it, and I didn't always think it felt it fit very well. Now that the official timeline is out, I think they need to uncomplicate it. And to uncomplicate it, it's bringing it back. Um, and I feel like Breath of the Wild is doing that. Don't know. Yeah. 
you know, otherwise, uh, individual theories exist. It can be in any of the timelines, and there are numerous reasons that it can be. Which is why I think it's all of them put together. That's all I got. There you go. That's it. That's the end of the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 15. Uh, if you uh, are watching this on YouTube, uh, on this final episode at the bottom, you can find links to the iTunes and the Podbean, where we post up the full audio, which we do every single Friday. Uh, so when we get our last video up on YouTube, that's when you could download the full audio, listen to it in your car, take it on your weekend workouts or your weekend excursions or whatever. Um, and there might be episodes you missed from earlier in the week. Uh, so there's that. Uh, you can obviously follow us, Nintendo Prime, at Ninty Prime. You subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, slash, oh, it's not even slash Nintendo Prime. It's weird. Just type in Nintendo Prime on... Well, if you're watching this on a video, just click the subscription icon thing because yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're watch if you're listening in, just type in Nintendo Prime on YouTube and we will pop up. We will be the first search you find, um, or you can type in Nintendo Prime podcast and we'll pop up as well. Uh, what else? You can follow me, the founder editor in chief of uh, Nintendo Prime, at Nate Chance. As always, this is Eric Moore over here, and uh, we're signing out. Got some Fire Emblem to talk about next time. Hopefully Sounds not some like sad Super Bowl news some next time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's awesome. Maybe Nintendo takes over the halftime. <laughs> it's not happening. Switch. Switch. <laughs> See you guys later.